All right, guys, I got a special video here for you today. Uh, I originally said I wasn't going to do a top five lantern video because there's only like five good ones. Um, <laughs> most of the people don't use any of the other ones. Uh, but I do feel like a comprehensive lantern guide is a good idea to kind of tell you all the strengths and weaknesses of each lantern. I'm going to be rating them in six categories. We're going to be doing uh, damage, the effectiveness of the elemental ability that it can proc, if any, how good it is at clearing minions, how good it is at destroying objects like um, black holes or uh, resikiri shields or any of that kind of stuff, um, the reliability of the lantern, and uh, if it gives you any survivability. So... Uh, with that, we're going to be jumping right into the Pangar Lantern. Now, the Pangar Lantern has a base damage of 2,500. Uh, keep in mind that these base damages are the base potential damage they could do. So, uh, if you're not hitting every single tick of damage on the Scarn Lantern or Pangar Lantern, you are not going to get the full 2,500 out of it. Now, the uh, you can see that he's already frost uh, It's It's very fast with the Pangar Lantern. You know, it hits multiple body parts, and I believe that uh, increases the rate of frost buildup. I could be wrong on that, but uh, I, I think that's how that works. Uh, please leave a comment if you uh, know for sure if that's how that works or not. That'd be great to know. Um, otherwise, uh, just... Watch how easily I wreck this poor Hellion that's four levels higher than me. Um, so the readings for the Pangar Lantern, I'm giving it a four on damage. It does... Um, th there's a couple Lanterns that are at the 2500 range, and there are a couple that are uh, higher potential damage, so that's why I'm giving it a four. The Frost Proc effect is really, really great. I'm giving the Frost Proc effect like a four and a half. Uh, or pro it probably deserves a 5, honestly, because just the fact that it lengthens all their animations, including how long they stay on the ground, when you, like, break a leg or give them a, a stagger uh, or anything like that, or a boot, uh, makes you get uh, a lot of extra damage and even more use out of things like overpower. So Frostproc is fantastic. Uh, it is absolutely the best lantern for clearing minions because it stays out on the field, and uh, anytime a minion... Uh, enters the field because it's uh, doing damage so frequently, it just immediately stops the minion and uh, prevents them from getting inside. So, uh, five star for clearing minions. Object destruction, I give it like a three. You can destroy probably about two thirds of the objects with just by dropping a panger lantern on it and running, um, but it does take time to clear, uh, so that's why it's only getting a three. Uh, as far as reliability goes, it's fairly reliable as far as doing damage. Um, behemoths aren't stunned by it or anything, so they can uh, move out of its area of effect, especially the faster behemoths like Embermane can easily just hop out of it really quick. Uh, so that's why it's only getting a 3. Uh, as far as survivability goes, I'm only giving it a 2. Um, most things are going to be either really high or really low. Pangar is kind of in the middle because... Uh, the frost effect that it drops does give you a little bit more warning time on what attacks it's going to do, so that's the only reason why it's getting uh, a couple points at all. And with that, we're going to move on to the next section, so I will see you there. All right, guys, we have the Skarn section here. And the Skarn Lantern is pretty much only useful in kind of tanky builds, uh, namely things running galvanized. So uh, it's kind of a, a niche lantern. Uh, it's great for new players because the, the shields give you a bubble like I just got hit by that, that, uh, that kind of backhand attack right there and it didn't do any damage. And uh, I also recommend pairing it with Bastion. So I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, getting into some of the stats here. And I'm going to kind of be looking at my prepared page and trying to fight him at the same time. So uh, let's try to do both at once without dying. 
All right. So for damage, I give it a, a four star. It's another one of those 2,500 uh, uh, lanterns. So, uh, but it does tick over time, very similar to the way the Pangar lantern does. But you do have to stay close to the behemoth. Like uh, you see that he just ran away, so I'm not getting any damage right now, uh, unless he moves back into my space. So, as far as the damage goes, uh, it is very subjective to the behemoth actually staying close to you. Uh, the ability of the elemental proc is, uh, you know, it is a terror proc, obviously, so it, what that does is that it gives us life drain. And the life drain effect isn't usually super great, so um, I, I only give uh, terror proc a 1 out of 5. It's just not super helpful, in my opinion. There's plenty of other ways to heal rather than waiting for orbs to come get to you. Uh, and uh, I also feel like it's it's kind of flashy. It kind of gets in the way of your screen, distracts uh, away from other things a little bit. As far as clearing minions, I give it a 3 out of 5. It's uh, It does kill minions. It doesn't prevent them from getting to you, though. So, like, if, uh, if a little guy tries to jump on you... Um, They'll they'll hit you most of the time. They'll they'll still jump on you and and do damage, because uh, that fraction of a second that they're near you is probably not the fraction of a second your damage is ticking. Uh, but you can walk into them and uh, they'll start to take damage and die. So uh, just running around, you can kind of kill some minions with it. Uh, as far as object destruction goes, I give it a two star. It definitely has the ability to destroy about the same amount of uh, objects as Pangar Lantern does. Uh, but the huge downside is you can't drop it and run. You have to stand next to that. Excuse me. You have to stand next to that one object. So uh, it's kind of uh, bad in that respect. Uh, so like if there were several objects near each other, you could drop a Pangar lantern. Um, like for example, the Zyga turrets. Uh, but Scar lantern, you got you can only stay near the one. So, uh, but it is good for. Uh, I, I want to say probably best for destroying big single things like. Uh, um, Rezakiri shields or the uh, gravity bombs that uh, Shr uh, Shroud releases. Let's see. The reliability is... The, you know, there's a couple different uh, aspects to this. I give it a 3 star overall for reliability. The shields are really reliable. Um, the, the only downside to the shields is they're not instant. You don't instantly get that 600 shields. It slowly builds up. Uh, like, I'll, I'll pop it here, you see I'm getting just a little bit every second here. So it does take a little while. I recommend popping it before going into combat and just spamming it as frequently as you can. But uh, you definitely don't get that instantly. And the reliability of the damage is, just as you saw with that shroud, as soon as I popped it, he took off. And then the damage went down the drain because he wasn't near me anymore. So... Uh, three stars on that. The big benefit of this weapon is five star survivability. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can see here I'm, I'm even building up past what it gave me before, and it's also refreshing that timer up to 600. So very, very good survivability there. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next section. All right, guys. Now here we have the Shrike Lantern. And I'm doing this on sword because it's kind of pointless to do it on repeaters, honestly, because we have the the uh, captain script giving us uh, our attack speed cap when we're drinking tonics. So uh, Shrike, I usually like to use for uh, the to obviously to get us to the attack speed cap on on other weapons. It's absolutely fantastic when you mix it with a uh, catalyst build because then you get the Shrike almost on 100% of the time with the increased lantern recharge rate you get from the tonic. And then on top of that, uh, you mix it with the attack speed from the attack speed tonic and you're at the attack speed cap pretty reliably. So I'm just going to go ahead and drink my tonics here and zoom in here and just kind of show you how effective this can be. Uh, Oh, I am swinging in the totally wrong direction. And I am not that great with sword. I'm pretty much just a button masher with sword. 
but uh, I do have a build that highlights this, uh, or a video that highlights this particular build, uh, if you want to check it out. I don't have that many sword videos, so it shouldn't be that, oop, shouldn't be that hard to find. Wow, I am whiffing all those, that's not good. But yeah, definitely not a sword main if you couldn't tell. I'm just whiffing attacks. I would like to see things, that would be great. Wow, okay. Can I please see anything other than my own death? Okay. That's been a problem for a very long time and they really need to fix that bug. Because you are supposed to actually be able to see stuff. Okay. Well, that was a mess, but... Alright. Now, my tonics wore off, but... I am still here. And he's dead, so... Uh, yeah, very good for, for that, and I'm, I'm gonna get into the stars really quick, and most of these are zeros, so... Uh, I am gonna rate the damage at a four to five star. Now it doesn't do direct damage, but the increase in uh, attack speed is a four star for yourself. And if you're in a group, uh, the buff actually also affects your allies. So then it just instantly becomes a five star because giving attack speed to your allies is awesome. Uh, zero star because it doesn't proc anything. So nothing there. It doesn't help you clear any minions. You still have to attack them. It doesn't really i mean it, it does increase your attack speed for if you want to attack objects but it's not doing any damage to the objects directly so it's zero star the reliability is five star bam you pop it it's instant there's no not there is there isn't any kind of chance that no effect is happening uh so five star for reliability and of course zero star for survivability because it's not doing anything there uh so that's it for the Shrike one. Very simple, very effective lantern when used with uh, certain weapons. And with that, I'll see you in the next section. All right, here we have the Drask lantern. And uh, this is kind of a skill shot weapon if you've uh, ever played uh, games like that. So. Uh, it, it does shoot in a line, like you can see there. You always want to try to get a head-to-tail shot with uh, the Drask Lantern because it does do some of the best damage, uh, at least the d best damage potential in the game. Uh, so I give it a 5-star. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Ember Main, I don't know if it's guaranteed to do more damage, but uh, that was a very quick kill on that poor care back there. Um, but yeah, shooting sideways on a behemoth like I did the second time is going to do less damage than, say, a broadside or um, any of the 2500 ones like Skarn or Pangar could do. Uh, you're going you're gonna to see a, about a 30 to 50% damage drop. Uh, but the damage increase is probably about 30% to 40% more damage if you get a good head-to-tail shot in a long behemoth with that Drask Lantern. So the downside of that obviously is you need to line it up and you need to spend time lining it up and that can cost you DPS in the long run. But uh, with repeaters, it's fairly easy to walk sideways and continue shooting while lining it up. So it's better on mobile weapons like that. Um, or even if you uh, have a, a any other mobile weapon like Strikers where you can just uh, tap the surge button and zoom into position and then pop that lantern and get good damage out of it. So five star on damage there. Uh, now the proc effect is shock and that is, in my opinion, probably the best elemental proc you can get. Now the downside is a lot of behemoths are immune to shock proc. Uh, so uh, that kind of sucks, but the behemoths that you can get shock proc on, five stars. Uh, Clearing minions, it's kind of meh. Like, they do have to be in direct line of fire, but it doesn't stop the the shot. It pierces. So uh, if a bunch of minions are following you, you could just turn around and blow them all away, but that does take quite a bit of time. So uh, I'm only giving it a two-star on clearing minions. It is very... You, you usually only get one or two with it. It's not great. Object destruction, also a two-star. Objects usually have a very small hitbox, so you're only getting... 
one, maybe two ticks on it. Uh, unless you get like a really clever lineup on a big Valamir shield or something, like you're probably only doing a very small amount of damage to those objects. Uh, reliability, I'm giving it a three star, uh, again, because of the fact that you have to position it. Um, so if your lantern is up uh, and you happen to be in a bad spot, that's not very good reliability. Um, but it usually doesn't take a ton of extra time to get there, so I'm going to throw in the middle there at a three star. And it still does do decent damage if you only have a second to pop it and uh, you just happen to be in a bad spot. It still does a little damage. And then, of course, zero for survivability because it doesn't do anything there. So with that, I will catch you guys in the next section. We only got three more to go. All right, I'm going to be honest. This is the first time I've even had a Molten... Or not a Molten, a Ember Main Lantern equipped in probably over a year. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I never use this thing. I feel like it's just way too unreliable for my tastes. But uh, here we go. I'm going to see if I can get one off here. He's raging, so that's going to explode on him. And there's the damage. So uh, it does have the highest straight damage rating. Ha, dang. Uh, it's just got such a long timer on it that I don't find it reliable whatsoever. That was close. Uh, you usually have to stagger the behemoth and do some kind of work or make sure he's in a long animation like that in order to throw the lantern out and actually do damage. But uh, it does have that 5 star damage. This is one of the top lanterns, uh, probably right along there with the Drask lantern. Uh, so 5 stars there, uh, despite the fact it's... Uh, I'll get into that later. Uh, so the blaze proc is... Two star. It does a little bit of extra damage. It's not a lot, and it doesn't last very long. So, a little bit extra damage, not helping you that much, uh, right there. So, just the two star. As far as clearing minions, one star. Minions move around usually really fast. You're usually trying to keep moving to avoiding the minions getting you, or trying to stay with the behemoth so they don't attack you. And the four second delay is just murder, trying to kill minions with it. Object destruction is five star. You do have to wait the four seconds, but when dealing with things like the uh, gravity well, or the gra uh, black hole, or whatever you want to call it, that like Shroud puts out, uh, or that pops up in Escalation sometimes, it should instantly destroy that. Uh, I know the Broadside Lantern does, and the Broadside does a little bit less damage than the Ember Main, so I'm pretty sure it should just blow it up after a few seconds. Reliability, one star. Absolutely terrible. Uh, I just, I really just don't recommend using it, like, at all. Um, not, not great. I had to pick a very slow, fat behemoth I knew wouldn't be moving around a lot in order to even kind of show you how much damage it did with with this. And keep in mind, I'm only level 14, so it'll do more damage at level 20. But uh, survivability, zero. Uh, not helping you there at all. So pretty low scores across the board, except in damage and object destruction. Uh, we only got two left, and with that, I'll be seeing you there. All right, we have the Koshai Lantern all ready to go. I can't believe that didn't boop him. Uh, we, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so the Koshai Lantern is one of those extreme uh, utility uh, lanterns. It's also got damage on it. So uh, I know a lot of people swear by this lantern. It's got pretty good uh, kind of ratings across the board in most things. It's not particularly best at anything, but it's at least good at kind of everything. So I am gonna like back off a little bit and let him uh, maybe set up some some fences here. Do something, buddy. Not that. Well, I did take damage, so let's let's uh that do that. All right. Well, he's setting some fences, so that's perfect. Oh no, we're trapped. Look out. Yeah, except I'm not trapped. Because Koshai Lantern! 
Uh, it's actually it's really good for a lot of positioning stuff. Uh, it lets you get out of things that normally you wouldn't be able to get out of. It uh, there's a lot of grab animations in the game that you can simply koshai out of. Uh, it also gives you that handy life steal uh, after it. So a lot of times players will do a full offensive build, like a perfection build, and then if they take damage, they can just pop Koshai Lantern, and because they're doing so much damage, the life steal will just heal them up really fast. It's not a bad strategy. Uh, but with that, let's get into the actual stats. Uh, the damage, uh, I give it... Uh, actually, you know what? Is it a tw I don't. Is it a 2500? No, it's not. I thought it was a little lower. It's a 2250. So it's a three star. It's below. A it's a little below some of the bigger ones. Like it does less than Pangar and uh, Terra even, which is weird. But uh, it does do the damage instantly. But it's still a three star on damage. The Terra proc, uh, just like with Scarn, is a one star. You're already getting life steal out of it, so it's kind of pointless, in my opinion, to get the Terra proc. As far as clearing minions, it's a two. You have to back away from them and then go back into them in order to kill them because it, it's wanky like that. So it, it's it's a two. Object destruction, again, a two. It does below average damage, and. Uh, Usually getting that close to an object is a uh, bad idea um, because of the time delay. Like, if you want to destroy a Nizaga turret, you could be essentially putting yourself uh, in a position where as soon as you hit the button, it's going to start charging a lightning ball, and then you get there, and then it shoots a lightning ball, and you get hit. So not great either. Reliability, 4-star. Uh, it's... Really good for, uh, like I said, uh, getting out of things like grabs and uh, obviously the Stormclaw fences like you just saw. And it's got a 4-star for survivability too because of the lifesteal and, again, getting out of the grabs and stuff. So, uh, oh, back to the reliability. You, you always get the lifesteal even if you don't hit something, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So uh, another, another thing, you don't have to like get close to the behemoth to get that lifesteal so uh really kind of kind of average stats across the board there some people swear by this lantern like i said it's it's a fairly common lantern for a lot of people to use um so uh with that i'll see you in the final lantern which is my personal favorite lantern i'll see you there all right here we have the broadside lantern now I'm going to be straight up, this lantern is actually pretty terrible on anything that's not repeaters. And that's because it really only does the jobs that repeaters can't. So if you're playing any other uh, weapon that has heavy attacks, which is pretty much any melee weapon, uh, just there's really no reason to run Broadside Lantern. Uh, it's it's just kind of uh, it, it just fills the niche that ooh that is not what I was expecting him to do it fills the niche that repeaters are missing so uh, keep that in mind when I praise this lantern up and down it's because uh, I just needed to fill that niche that repeaters are missing that's that's pretty much it um, it counts as a heavy attack I'm pretty sure it's the only lantern that counts as a heavy attack. Uh, I, I don't think... I mean, Embermane might. I don't really play with Embermane, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Wow, there's that, that shock prior. I'm really going to have to wait for him to climb on this tree here so I don't just kill him. Climb on your dumb tree. Now he's tired. Come on! That is not a clee triming activity. Right, well, while I'm waiting, I might as well go over the stats here. Uh, as far as damage, I give it a 4-star. And uh, it does do more damage than Pangar or Skarn can do. But it, does, it doesn't do as much damage as Embermane. There we go. So you can see, uh, and not only with Koshe, but any Behemoth that has uh, a damage threshold or heavy attack knockdown like that. 
just instantly knocks him down. And it's the only way repeaters can do that, other than obviously getting a part break will knock him out of it too. But uh, it's absolutely fantastic for that. It can boop, but uh, the second delay does make it kind of hard. But anyway, what I was saying is the four star damage, because it does more damage than anything, except it has the potential to do less damage than Drask if you aim your Drask properly. And it does less damage than Embermane, but Embermane has a four second delay, so very unreliable. So, But four star damage, uh, the, the biggest and uh, really only downside to playing this on repeaters is the there's no proc. You don't get any kind of elemental bonus from that. Uh, I give it a four star on clearing minions. It's got a pretty large area of effect, uh, but um, it's not as good as Pangar Lantern. So, uh, or, um, yeah, pretty, pretty much just Pangar Lantern, I think, uh, cause it doesn't stay there, but it clears about the same size area, uh, onto object destruction, five star, uh, absolutely phenomenal. It destroys everything instantly with the exception of, um, uh, Va the Valamir big shield that he puts around himself. I think that's the only object it doesn't instantly destroy. Unless you're way under leveled for something. Like if you're level 5 and you get put in like a level 15 Resicuri shield, I think it won't destroy it then because the damage is just too low. But as long as you're like at or around the level of the behemoth or higher, it should destroy anything in um, instantly. That's uh, That counts um, any kind of turrets. Like I said, the Resicuri shield's just instantly gone. Um, and because the, the damage isn't spread out, you can destroy multiple Resicure shields. Like if your allies are nearby and you aim it right, you, you hit both shields, they'll both instantly break. Um, and that counts uh, Shroud, Gravity Bombs, anything. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic for that. Reliability, uh, four star. One second delay, 90% of the time doesn't matter. As long as you're not dumb with it and you just kind of throw it out willy-nilly against the fast behemoths like Embermane and you know their movesets, uh, just throw it when you know they're going to be there for a second. It's not super hard. Uh, but survivability, I do give it a two-star. Um, I don't give it a lot because it doesn't really help you survive that much, but it does. Um, it can be used to boot, and uh, it does prevent behemoths from doing their um, special attacks after they go into their uh, knockdown state. So that does help you survive just a little bit. So two-star there. And uh, with that, I will uh, catch you guys later. Please uh, give me that follow if you haven't already. I'm starting to get close to the 900 mark, and I need 1,000 to make partner. And if I get 1,000 uh, views on all my videos, which I'm most of them I do after, after about a month, uh, I can make Dauntless Partner too, and then I can start getting you guys some firework codes. And uh, we'll start to have a lot of fun with this, so... Hopefully I'll see you guys around later. Have a good one.